take a few minutes and talk about the creator. Uh, this is a movie that I, you know, I was hesitant to label it my most anticipated movie of the year because every single time I do that, the film turns out to be what I like to call a gentleman's three, a three out of five movie that is like, it's good, but not great. And it always is disappointing in some way, right? Uh, it happens every single time going back to like, now you see me and like movies like Triple Frontier. And other, there's always a movie every year that I'm like, break your way for it. And it's a three out of five. Uh, so I was scared that the creator was going to be another three out of five movie. And it's not, it is much better than that. Uh, the film is directed by Gareth Edwards. Uh, you probably know from Godzilla and what I think is the best Star Wars movie, Rogue One. I don't care whether or not that movie got taken from him or not in the end. It doesn't matter. It's still a fantastic film. And the creator proves to me that Edwards knows his way around this genre. He knows how to make movies of epic scale uh, and make them intimate and feel different than other movies, even when there are familiar aspects. And there are familiar aspects in the creator. You can see elements of Blade Runner, Akira, maybe a little bit of Apocalypse Now, especially in the depiction of, of the war that's going on. Uh, there are things in there that feel very familiar, but it's all in the presentation. And I think that's where the creator stands out above the rest. This feels like really important crucial sci-fi that's going to be that could be create that could create a long lasting legacy now the film takes place in the future 2070 and it deals with the human ai connection yes it's another movie about artificial intelligence might as well get used to it uh, pretty soon ai will be writing movies about itself uh <laughs> one of these days <laughs> i hope i'm not around to see that um but basically you know the world has allowed AI to become part of the fabric of society until there is a massive nuclear detonation on the West Coast. The United States declares war on all artif artificial intelligence, um, except in a place called New Asia, where uh, where AI has, has really become part of the fabric of their culture. Um, the United States launches a war uh, within New Asia, but not with New Asia, uh, but against the AI and the rebel camps that are set up within it. Um, and the story follows Joshua, who's played by John David Washington. Um, and Joshua has, you know, he has the classic tragic backstory. He's a former uh, soldier, a special agent, uh, who was undercover, uh, while his wife, played by Gemma, uh, Gemma Chan, uh, it's gets murdered while he's undercover uh, investigating her uh, and her suspected ties to a rebel AI leader. Um, after that, he's kind of disillusioned, of course, uh, until he's brought back into the fight uh, by by his, uh, by his former commander, played by Allison Janney, uh, who tells him that they need him to 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 attack, to infiltrate the enemy, the enemy, enemy, uh, enemy side and find, uh, Namada, who is the one who is, who is, uh, the rebel leader who has created a, a new, a new AI that can finish the war once and for all by destroying humanity. Now, when Joshua does infiltrate it and he finds out what that AI is, he finds that it is a child. It is in the form of a child. Uh, who comes to be nicknamed Alfie. Uh, now, since this child may also know the whereabouts of, of Joshua's uh, uh, wife, who is apparently alive, uh, he can't just kill the thing he was sent to kill. Uh, and plus, also, it looks like a child, so he doesn't want to kill it. But, uh, but basically, he's doing this at first because the child knows the whereabouts of Maya, his, his, his former wife. And he wants to find that out. But of course, along the way, they grow closer together. Uh, it's a classic type storyline. You know, there's elements of Lone Wolf and Cub in there. There's elements of Paper Moon in there. You know, we've seen this sort of thing. There's elements of the Mandalorian in there, right? Like this is this is the whole storyline where, where you know, a kid is traveling along with a with a with an older person who is 
who's got uh, other missions to carry on. They grow bond. They they bond. They grow closer together. They form like a, a parent child dynamic, right? Uh, and that's that's what happens here. But the thing I like about it is that it's not so simple. Uh, Joshua is a very complicated person. He's he's you know he's he's got uh, rightful reason to dislike AI. And he's 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 conflicted about his mission because he's also supposed to be saving humanity. It's what he wants to do. He's kind of torn between doing what he's been assigned to do and what he knows he should do. And the thing that what, what his heart wants, what his heart wants is to is to be reunited with his wife and to finally be happy again, or at least have a chance to be happy again. Um, so he's got a lot going on inside him. And I also like journey uh, Alfie's journey as well as this as this AI that has been literally holed away uh, from the rest of the world while, while it grows uh, and is now out in the world experiencing real people, seeing AI, communicating with AI, and seeing how, how easily people have come to accept them as you know their own sentient race. And this movie goes to great lengths to show the AI as sentient beings. Uh, in the way they act, the way they have integrated with uh, with humanity, they have families, they have lives and hopes and dreams. Uh, when they hurt, they 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 express pain just like humans do, and so so it's very easy to forget that you're even watching AI figures. You you think of them as human, and I think they do a really good job of getting that across. One of the things this movie that does is so different than a lot of other sci-fi of this type is its sensitivity. And it, it explores this familiar topic with a lot of heart and genuine emotions. And I really like that about it. And it does all that while still being a wildly entertaining film with lots of action and shootouts and explosions and cool tech and all sorts of stuff. And it looks great. It looks absolutely amazing. You can tell just by the images behind me, this isn't like, it's not all like like the Blade Runner landscape, right? Like we're so, got so accustomed to seeing that, what that looks like, all the neon blues and things and shadows and things like that. We've seen that stuff, the kind of noir-esque feel. You get some elements of that, but mainly this film looks like a cross between that and kind of the, the rustic aspect of like District Nine, and I th I think that's really cool. Like most of it is shot, I believe, in Tibet. Maybe I think it's it shot it shot somewhere else like that. I think it's Tibet, and you can see that the landscapes are just different. It's mountainous, it's rugged, it's rustic. I love it. It's just different. It makes the fights feel real, visceral, and like they have stakes and people people on the ground are really being affected by this war fighting on the streets. I love that aspect of this movie. It's a little bit like what he brought, what Edwards brought to Rogue One. And I've said a million times that the reason why Rogue One is the best Star Wars movie to me is because it's the only one that feels like an actual war. You have people fighting on the ground and having real, real, real battles and not like staged Hollywood battles or or TIE fighter battles, or, you know, it's not like that. It feels gritty, you know, it, it, gritty and dirty. And I like that. And you get a lot of that in this movie too. Um, I just think they, uh, Edwards did a fantastic job with this. And I'm curious to see what happens next. I, first of all, I hope it's a gigantic hit. That's my main thing. I'm going to go see it again this weekend with some friends. Uh, and I'm, if, I saw Rogue One, I think, six times in the, in the movie theaters. I'll see the creator at least three, you know, and maybe more, depending on who else of my friend group hasn't seen it. You know, I'll go with any, all of them to go see it, probably, <laughs> you know. Um, but I hope it's a huge hit, and I hope people take a liking to it, and I hope that we're going to see more in this universe, because I think it's dying to be explored. I want to see, I want to see stories set early on in the in the adoption of AI. I want to see stories early after the nuclear detonation. I want to see individual stories of, of people and, and AI coming together. I want to see all this stuff. I want to see everything. 
um i'm fascinated by what why about what edwards has created here and i hope this is not the end but the beginning of something new uh it's not often that we get original franchises you know like you know like original original content period anymore uh much less something of this scope um so i really hope it's not the end but those are my thoughts on the creator uh it is coming out in theaters on september 29th this being thursday the 28th you can see it you probably see it in theaters tonight uh and i i recommend everybody go and check it out it is one of my favorite movies of the year it will almost certainly be in my top 10 right and i know there's still a lot coming up but it's going to be hard to knock this movie out of there. That's all I'm going to say. Thanks again for checking out, checking this out. I am Travis Hobson of PunchDrunkCritics.com. You can check me out there every single day, as well as numerous places here in D.C. on television and radio. Thanks again. Goodbye. Thanks for checking out the show. If you like what we're laying down, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest stuff.